like it, you know. Not when I first came. Couldn't seem to get on with the place. No. No. Of course, that was some time ago. Now? Well, you wouldn't, would you? You grow accustomed, you see. And they've been good to me. Oh, yes. Always look on the bright side. <laughs> Only thing. What you do, though? When you go out, I mean. What you do? Well, I've been thinking about that, haven't I? Three weeks, is it? Three weeks. So what you do? It's not settled, no. Matter of fact, I may decide to stay here, not go out at all. Not go out? No, not just at present. I mean, I'm used to it here now. Might as well stay. Yes, yes, you just caught me. No, 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 that's all right. Ah, uh, what's the problem? Oh, I see you. I'm sorry, I assumed it was... Thursday? Yes, thank you, I'd love to. Oh, no, that sounds fine. As a matter of fact, I haven't been to the cinema for ages. Mm, lovely. All right, you come here, then. About seven, yes. Right, see you then. Goodbye. she'd had a change of heart. I mean, it's the old story, isn't it? Wait until the last minute and then bring in welfare. We couldn't tell you earlier. We didn't know. It wasn't until the other day she started this absurd thing of wanting to stay. Oh, well, it's original. Anyway, trouble is she's due out in, what, three weeks? She doesn't leave me much time. Well, she's being very non-communicative about the whole thing. Mm. I can try. No, I can sort things out. It's just that I wish you could have brought me in sooner. We don't actually go out of our way to make things difficult for welfare, you know. Of course not. I didn't mean... Look, just give me the details, will you? Release in three weeks, yes? Now, what exactly is she saying? Not a lot. She asked to see me yesterday and informed me that after due consideration she had decided that she didn't want to go out when her release date comes up. Apparently she wishes to remain in Stone Park. Now, Mrs Spooner, we're all anxious to help. And, of course, I understand it could be... Well, it can be a jolt when you have to face the world outside. A jolt, yes. Comes sudden, doesn't it? Exactly, but I think you'll find you'll adjust more quickly than you imagine. Now, let's see. Your home's in Bristol, isn't it? I come from Bristol, yes. Good. And you'd live there. No home. Sorry? I haven't got any home there now, have I? This is my home now. Yes, of course, this has been your temporary home. And you've made it very nice. I made but... these myself, see? Doilies. They're pretty, aren't they? Don't you think? Yes, they're very pretty. Now. In my spare time, crocheting. I've always had nimble fingers, though I say it. Now, you lived in Bristol with your sister, Mrs. Mrs. Druid. You mean you didn't? I can't go back there. Why not? No, no. You mean you wouldn't, she wouldn't want you? I can't ever go back there. She wouldn't have me. Not after what I did. She says I'm a bad woman. Bad, bad. No, miss, it's best I stay here, miss. Best for all. I won't be any trouble, I promise. And I'll work hard. You won't have any cause for complaint. Mrs Spooner, it isn't possible for you to stay here. If you feel that you can't go to your sister, then we shall have to find somewhere else a hostel. But you can't stay here. Do you understand that? Oh, look, don't... Don't worry about it. We'll sort something out. I'll come and see you again tomorrow, all right? Well, I suppose we might have expected something like this. I understand she's always been a bit of a strange one. Yes, when she first came to us, she used to invent illnesses to get into the hospital wing. Oh, I think she just likes a lot of attention. And seems to get her own way in the end. Well, she can't get her own way this time. It isn't possible. No. Now, let's see. Her offence was persistent shoplifting. No previous record. And the things she stole weren't things she apparently needed or wanted. That sounds like a cry for help, doesn't it? Do we know what happened to Mr Spooner? Dead some years ago. Now, the only relative, apparently, is a sister who lives in Bristol. Do we know anything about her? No, except that Mrs Spooner used to live with her. Apparently, she appeared in court as a character witness on Spooner's behalf. Has she been to see her? 
No, Governor. Any visitors at all? No. Nope. I see. And now she says she's nowhere to go and doesn't want to leave us. She's very certain she can't go back to Bristol. Did she say why? Says her sister wouldn't have her. Sounds to me as if Mrs Spooner has been made to feel she disgraced the family name. You know, the sort of thing. Mm. But in that case, why did the sister speak for her at the trial? Well, that doesn't add up. Unless, of course, Mrs Spooner's inventing things again. Hmm. Well, I'm going down to Bristol next week for a probation service conference. I could have a word with a local probation officer, if you like, and then perhaps go and see the sitter myself. Yes. Yes, I think it's a good idea. Thank you, Miss Clark. Now, I think that's it, isn't it? Uh -huh. Unless there's anything else anyone wants to raise? Miss no. no, I would like a word about staff replacement. Oh, yes, of course, Miss Clark. Now, could that wait till the end of the week, say Thursday or Friday? Oh, yes, yes, that's fine. It's just that I seem to have got myself a bit full up at the beginning. Yes, of course. Didn't mean that. Good. Thank you, Miss Clark. Miss Parrish. Hang on a moment, will you, Charles? How long has Miss Clark been at Stone Park? Oh, I don't know. Must be, um, well, three or four years now. Mm. I get the impression she's a very efficient person. Oh, yes, she's certainly that. And I... Let's do the round, shall we? And then my husband, he always liked his things kept nice. Oh, he was a smart man. Looked ever so good in his uniform and cap. Oh, yes, they do, don't they? I've always fancied the services. Oh, he wasn't in the services, dear, except, of course, during the war. No, he drove. Oh, you had a car then? No, he was a chauffeur. Billy, he just drove the car, looked after it for my father. Rolls Royce it was. Oh, Mrs. Spooner, I'd just like a word with you, if I may. Oh, yes. Uh, would you mind, Mrs. Hopper? Oh, no. No, no Miss, you go right ahead, Miss. Perhaps I'll see you later, Ellen. Yes, see you later. Now, Mrs. Spooner, I want you to listen very carefully. I'm going down to Bristol tomorrow to see your sister. Oh, no, no, you mustn't. You can't. I haven't got a sister. I don't know anyone now, in Bristol. calm down, Mrs. Spooner. No one is going to make you do anything you don't want to do. Haven't got a sister. But we have her address. Look, Mrs. Druitt, 91 Pemberton Road, Clifton. Now, that's your sister, isn't it? I mean, you used to live there, didn't you? No. Oh, come along, Mrs. Spooner. We know that you did. I haven't got a sister. I see. Then this lady who lives at 91 Pemberton Road is someone else, is she? She won't see you. How do you know that? She won't let you in. Oh, you go to Bristol and see her. I can't stop you, can I? You go down there and do what you like. But I'm telling you, that lady is not my sister. But Mrs. Spooner... No, you go on. I'm not saying any more. Mrs. Spooner, please, I'm trying to help you. That lady is not my sister. Mrs. Druitt. I am Mrs. Druitt, yes. Well, my name is Clark, Elizabeth Clark. I'm from Stone Park, Welfare. I wondered if I could speak to you. You've come about Ellen? Mrs. Ellen Spooner, yes. Oh, thank God I've been so worried, not knowing what I should do. I knew her time was nearly completed. Oh, come in, please. Will you come in? Thank you. Shall we go into the drawing room? Do sit down. Thank you. Now you've come to tell me arrangements for Ellen's release. Well, yes, I... Mrs. Druitt... She's all right, isn't she? There's nothing wrong. Oh, no, no. She's perfectly all right. I feel so cut off down here. I'd have liked to have visited her. You allow that, I believe, mm. don't you? But I find it difficult to get around just now. Mrs. Druitt, you're... 
Your sister is due for release in three weeks' time. Now, normally, there would be no problem about this at all, as long as you are willing to have her back here. But of course, of course. Oh, the whole thing should be quite straightforward. Oh, I'm so glad. Poor Ellen. How she must have suffered. And all so unnecessarily, so utterly, utterly unnecessary. Yes. There is, however, a snag. I don't quite know how to put this, Mrs. Druitt, but... At the moment, Mrs. Spooner is refusing to come to you. She seems to think you will not welcome her. I don't understand. And I'm afraid that's not all. She denies, quite categorically, that you are her sister. She says she has no sister. Now, we've talked to her, reasoned with her, tried to persuade her. Stop! To... Don't say anything more. Oh, that poor child. That poor, poor child. Sure. Oh. Here, what do you think you're doing? Come on, Spooner, that's not your cell and you're not supposed to be doing that, you know. Doing no harm, am I? That's not the point, dear. What's your game, then? Trying to show us up, are you? Of course not. Just helping, that's all. Leave her alone, Coral. She ain't doing no harm. No? Well, just keep out of my way. I hate greasers. Doing. Just help him, miss. Cleaning. Well, did anybody ask you to do this? Mrs. Spencer, Mrs. Norris? No, miss. Then why? It's free association, you know that. Works over for the day. Oh, I know that, Miss Parrish. I just wanted to help, you know, help keep the place clean and nice. Come with me, please. Bring that. Put it down. Now, Mrs. Spooner, what is all this about? I was just helping, wasn't I? In your own free time, without being asked? Well, there's no law against it, is there? No, 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 of course not. It's... it's very praiseworthy. But I'm afraid, however hard you work, we can't keep you in here when your sentence is up. You understand that, don't you? Yes, Miss Parrish. Sit down, Mrs. Spooner. When you first came here six months ago, you hated it, didn't you? Yes, miss. But you're much happier now. Got used to it, haven't I? Is that all it is? I got my friends here. You've got friends outside too, I expect. No. None at all? No. She won't let me. She won't let you? Who? Who won't let you, Mrs. Spooner? I got my cell all nice. It's the prettiest one on the wing. You ask any of them. You mean your sister wouldn't let you have any friends? Miss Clark. She'll go and see her. I can't stop her, can I? But I don't know her. I don't acknowledge her. And you can't make me go back there. Can you? You see, my dear... May I call you Elizabeth? Miss Clark seems so formal. Oh, please do. Call me Liz. Everyone does. You see, Elizabeth, since her husband's death, my sister's become a little confused. Of course, there's no question of my not wanting her back. This is her home. It always has been. As much hers as mine. She has every right to be here. Oh, I'm so glad. I felt sure there must be some mistake. But why does... Why does she feel she isn't wanted? Mm. I think I can explain that. You see, when she was much younger, little more than a girl, my sister ran away with her, my father's chauffeur. It was all very unfortunate. An unsuitable marriage. But I suppose at the time it seemed very romantic to her. Eloping against the family's wishes. You know, sort of dreams young girls have. Yes, of course. The marriage didn't turn out very well. He was unable to find a job. And eventually my father took him back. Took them both back. They lived in the flat above the garage. But Ellen wasn't very happy. And I think she blamed my father. It was unfair, of course. But I think she saw herself in the role of an outcast. Do you know what I mean? Thank you. Indeed I do. The damage labels can do. Then when my father died, the cars had to be sold, of course. It was all we could do to keep on with the house. And Spooner had nothing to do. They stayed on in the flat, but I'm afraid he started drinking. Ellen wanted to leave, but by that time he was in no state to make a fresh start. 
And then when he died, well, she came back to live with me. I did my best to make her happy. Perhaps I could have been more understanding, more tolerant. Oh, I'm sure you did all you could. No. No, there's always something more you can do. I'm sorry. It's a sad story. Yes. There is one thing, though. Forgive me, but you don't seem like sisters. I mean, you, you speak so differently, for one thing. Ellen has quite a strong Bristol accent. You're a very perceptive person, aren't you, Elizabeth? I'm really ready. Hmm? It's just that it's been one of those evenings when the telephone hasn't stopped ever since I got in. Do you find that? What? There's no balance about the way the telephone behaves. <laughs> it either goes all the time or not at all, as if it's got into a habit all of its own. You look lovely. Thank you, Peter. Well. Have we got time for a drink? Oh, yes, I think so. The big picture's not till 8.30, mm -hmm. so unless you want to look at life or whatever. Oh, I used to love looking at life. <laughs> Sit down. Thanks. What'll you have? Start? Mmm, fine. I'm quite excited. It's ages since I've been to the movies. Yes, well, I never seem to get the time these days. And then I don't much like going alone. Oh, no, I don't mind that. Never have. It's always seemed to me one of those things that you can do on your own, quite happily, going to the flicks. Thank well, you. How's life then? Life? Oh, life's all right. Sometimes I wish I wasn't living quite so on top of things here. You mean this flat being attached to the prison? Hmm. It's other people, really, friends. It would be easier for them if I wasn't actually living in. I think they find it somehow odd coming to dinner in a prison. Oh, yes, I know, even the most enlightened people. You mean to say you actually work in a prison? <laughs> it's a mixture of awe and curiosity Born of a fascination with human wickedness. Now, I sometimes wish that the outside world didn't endow us with quite such an aura of mystery, but there it is. You never stop that. Well, what are we going to see? It's called The Helsinki Affair, mm -hmm. and it is supposed to be very good. This is kind of you. <laughs> On the contrary. Thank you for inviting me to stay for a meal. I hate having to ask you to prepare your own food. <laughs> when my parents were alive, we had servants, of course, but... Presumably you have someone who comes in. Oh, there's a girl twice a week to help with the cleaning. She's not much good. To tell you the truth, I keep her on for companionship. How on earth do you manage? Well, my needs are simple. Most of the house is shut up, as you can see. I manage, thank you. Well, it's a beautiful house. Yes, isn't it? I've tried to preserve it as it was when I was a child. I like to think that one day it may be of interest. I'm sure it will be. Got everything you want? Oh, yes, yes, thank you. We were talking about Ellen. Yes, how we would not be taken for sisters. I realise that. Her accent. I don't mean to pry. I only wondered if it might help us to understand her attitude. Of course. It's not an attractive story. And I find it difficult to speak ill of my parents. But I fear they were and are entirely to blame. Please, Mrs. Druitt, if it's painful. No, no. It's the truth. You see, Ellen was an unwanted child. My parents hoped for a son, longed for a son. Well, after three daughters, it's not unusual, is it? When Ellen was born, my mother wouldn't even look at her, and my father was bitterly disappointed. They virtually ignored her throughout her childhood. Well, naturally, the child sought love and affection wherever she could find it. We had a housekeeper at the time, a local woman, a dear, good soul. She befriended Ellen, cared for her, gave her the affection she needed. Of course, in time, Ellen became like her own daughter. In fact, lots of people thought that's what she was. My Parents allowed, always encouraged this belief. It was shameful, unforgivable. My sisters and I did what we could to make it up to her. And then, of course, she married Spooner. And the rest you know. I'm sorry. Thank you, Mrs. Druitt. 
Thank you for telling me. Please don't upset yourself. I'm sure we can find a way to bring the two of you together again. Do you think you can? Oh, that would make me so happy. So very happy. <laughs> but who in the world told you it was a good film? I can't remember. <laughs> I lost track half the way through. Now, did he turn out to be a double agent or a double double agent? I like Inez, the beautiful female spy. Hmm. No, she wasn't a spy. Oh, yes, she was. To get revenge for the murder of her brother, don't you remember? Oh, no, that bit was made up. No, it wasn't. He said it was made up, and it was really true. Oh, no, no, he said it was true, but it was really made up. No, you've got it wrong. The thing was that he had to... Yes, but he didn't have... she didn't have a brother. That bit was... No, uh, stop. Stop. I have to admit, I may have been asleep for that bit. <laughs> Now, I'm sorry it was so awful. Oh, I enjoyed it, really. I only hope I didn't embarrass you by laughing in all the wrong places. No, not the least. Stay for a drink? Yes, I'd love to. Right. Thank you. Now, what about you? In a minute, I shall make myself some tea. It's a habit I have. Yes, I remember. Do you? Strange. Things you remember about a person. Things you don't. I've enjoyed this evening, Peter. Thank you. Well, so have I. Let's do it again sometime. Yes, I'd love to. I'll go and make myself that tea. I'll help you. I want you to explain to me about Inez and her brother and whether she was or was not a spy. <laughs> Sister wants her to come back, does she? Yes, absolutely. The poor old thing was quite overcome with gratitude when I said I thought we could sort it out. She's been terribly worried. Well, why didn't she come and see Spooner? Oh, she couldn't. She's getting on. Can't get about much. Pushing 70, I should think. Oh. Well, I wish you luck. Thanks. I think there may be more to it, though. Now, what do you mean? Oh, I don't know. I said something in Spooner. It isn't just hatred of her family. I had a talk with her yesterday, and there's something. I didn't want to sound dramatic, but she is frightened of something. Oh, yes, I suppose she is, but it all comes from feeling unloved, rejected. Seems she almost escaped once when she married, but then the husband died, she was thrown back in the family again. Yeah, well, I hope you're right. Dr. to me. Oh, uh, I'm sorry, I didn't realise you had anyone with you. Sorry, Liz. Hello, Peter. Well, that's it, I think, Miss Parrish. I'll see Spoon, I'll let you know, all right? It's fine. Right, thank you, Miss Parrish. Peter. Oh, that was a bit sudden. What have you done to upset her? I've no idea. Oscar? Yeah, Hopwood? Miss. Yeah, miss. Jackson? Yeah. Knightley? Yeah, miss. Lewis? Yes, miss. Painter? Yeah, miss. Rook? Present. Spooner? Spooner? Where's Spooner? Hopwood, have you seen Spooner this morning? No, miss, not since breakfast. Shall I go and look for her, miss? No, no, you stay where you are. All right, if you're all here except Spooner, off you go. Come on now, hurry up. Tell Miss Parrish Spooner isn't with our working party. Missing since breakfast. I'll see this lot off to the sewing room. Right, Mrs. Spencer. One moment. Do you think Jenny ought to see the new psychiatrist? What's mm. his name? Uh, Daddy, Dr. Daddy. Mm. Oh, very well. I'll wait to hear from you on that. Anything else? No, that's all, really. Thanks, Miss Parrish. All right, come in. Miss Parrish? Yes, yes, come in. I'll be off then. Mrs. Spencer asked me to let you know Spooner's missing from her work party. Missing? Apparently, hasn't been seen since breakfast. Oh dear. Well, she can't have gone far. Was Mrs. Hopwood with the sewing party, did you see? Yes, I saw her. Oh, she probably knows what Spooner's up to. I wish I did. Well, she's not there. She's made that cell really nice, hasn't she? Yes. Too nice. How do you mean? Never mind. Did you slop out this morning? Yes. Mrs. Spooner. Now, what's all this? All right, Mrs. Norris, I'll deal with this. Thank you. 
Mrs. Spooner? Are you going to talk to me or just go back to work in silence? You've been good to me. Have I? Well, if you've been cooperative and well-behaved, that's as it should be, I expect. I don't want you to be angry, you see. I don't want you to be cross. Good. Well, if you pull yourself together and we get you back to the sewing room, I shan't have anything to be angry about, now will I? But what shall I do, miss? Whatever shall I do? Now, listen, Mrs. Spooner, you really must be sensible about your release. That's what's bothering you, isn't it? See, whatever you do, you're going out of here in, what is it, two weeks now, so just make up your mind to it. I don't want to. Yes, I know, but I promise you, once you're out, you'll soon change your mind. Come along now. Nowhere. I've got nowhere to go. Well, that'll all be arranged. You know, you don't have to do anything you don't want to. If you've really made up your mind not to go to your sister, then Miss Clark will find you somewhere else. So cheer up, eh? Well, that looks as if it's going to be a continuing problem. Yeah. Anything else? No, I don't think so. Well, that uh, holiday schedule you wanted seems to be working out pretty well. Oh, good. Charles, mm? talking of holidays, could you do a thing for me? I expect so. What is it? Well, I want to be away this coming weekend. Can you look after things? Yes, of course. I don't think my wife's fixed anything. Oh. Where are you off to? What? Oh, nowhere, nowhere special. I'm staying with relations in Sussex by the sea. Oh, I didn't know you had relations in Sussex. Hmm. I've got an uncle who lives down that way. Oh. Well, I hope you have a good time. Thank you. Right. Let's get on with the round, shall we? Washroom. We're not too happy this morning. Come on, Mrs. Spooner. What's the matter with you today? You should be on top of the world. You'll be getting out in a few weeks, won't you? Come on. What are you going to do? Fetch your work. the matter with the woman? Well, Mrs. Spencer seems pretty sure she did do it deliberately. I mean, she must be very disturbed if she's prepared to wound herself in order to avoid being sent home. Well, thank God it wasn't serious. Well, that's not the point, Miss Parrish. <laughs> Have you talked to her? Oh, yes. It's difficult, well, impossible to get through to her in any real sense, but I think she's frightened. Uh, frightened? Yes. Oh, Miss Clark knows more about it than I do. Well? I'm afraid I've not had a chance to see her yet. But I've seen her sister, who's eminently sensible and anxious for Mrs. Spooner to get her. Then why is Mrs. Spooner so unwilling? What's she frightened of? I don't think she is frightened, exactly. She had a difficult childhood, made an unfortunate marriage, and simply turned against the family. But please, leave it with me. I'm sorry I didn't see her before this, but there just hasn't been the opportunity. No, 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 I quite realise that. Well, if you're certain, you can make Mrs. Spooner see sense. Well, thank you. Everything okay for Friday? Yes, fine. Good. See you. Have you certainly been busy lately? <laughs> yes. Yes, I suppose I have. Better see you from one week to the next. Look, Liz, I thought we agreed. Oh. Yes, I know, but it'd be nice to see you. Well, just once the blue moon. Well, is that a good idea, do you think? Anyway, I've got to get on now. Oh, very well, well, I'm I just sorry. Thought... It's just I don't really want to discuss it here. No, no, of course not. Look, come and have dinner at the weekend. You can't. I'm away this weekend. Oh, where are you going? Well, nowhere special. I'm, uh, I'm spending a couple of days with some friends down at Bossom. Now, I really do have to get back. Peter? Hmm? Did you enjoy the film the other night? 
Rumour has it you took our esteemed governor the pictures. Well, yes. Yes, I did. Any objection? Oh, no, no. I just wondered what he is thinking, you know, what this place is like. Yes. Well, we went to the movies. We had a very pleasant evening. And now I do have to go. See you. Miss Clark, could I have a word? What? Oh, no, Mrs. Spencer. It isn't convenient at the moment. Find me later, will you? Well, how are you feeling? I'm all right. That wasn't a very sensible thing to do, was it? Couldn't help it. My hand slipped. Now, Mrs. Spooner, I've seen your sister. I've talked to her, and I want you to believe that your sister <laughs> loves you. Yes, she does, and she wants you to come to her. Does she, then? Now, I know things haven't been easy for you in the past. But wouldn't it be better to forgive and forget? Forget? Yes. Forget the way your parents behaved. That's over now. Over, is it? Yes. Did she tell you that? We talked about it, yes. Mm. Talk you into anything she wanted, that one. Are you telling me that your sister lied to me? I don't know what she said, do I? I don't think she was lying, Mrs Spooner. I'm quite good at telling when people aren't speaking the truth. I suppose it's part of my job. She wants you back with her. Of course she does. Do you believe that? She wants me back, all right. Did you notice anything about that house? Well, it's a big place, isn't it? See any servants about, did you? In the old days, we had servants, a cook, maids and that. Yes, I don't know. Not anymore, not now. Isn't there someone who comes in twice a week? Twice a week. What are you saying, Mrs. I'm not Spooner? saying anything. You tell me she wants me back. Well, that doesn't surprise me. But surely you're not afraid of a bit of hard work to help out around the house? Look, I want you to let me arrange for her to come to see you. No, no, I won't no, see but her. But she wants to come, even though it'll be difficult. No, she... I won't see her. Oh, you go away. I don't want any help from you or anybody. Mrs. Spooner. Mrs. Spooner. Go away. Mm. Mm. And how long will it take us to get there? I see. And we're expected about 7 7.30? Yes, lovely. I'll meet you about half past four, then. Oh, no, that's all arranged. Charles is looking after things for me. Oh, no, of course I didn't. No, I'll come to you. It's simpler. <laughs> I feel as if I were back at school, arranging to meet one of the college boys from down the road. Yes, I did. No, certainly not. It was a very proper school. <laughs> yes. All right, Peter, I'll see you about half past four then. Hmm? Yes, so am I. Goodbye. Oh, hello. Do you want me? Oh, I was hoping to catch the governor. Ah, gone, I'm afraid. Away for the weekend. Can I help? Liz? Sorry? Anything I can do? Oh, no, 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 it's nothing that can't wait till Monday. Where should you come? No idea. Staying with relations in Sussex on the sea somewhere. Do her good to get away from this place for a day or two. Yes. Yeah, she doesn't get away very often. Hmm. Um, how are things with Mrs. Spooner? Oh, that'll work itself out. Still refusing to see her sister, but... Can't you persuade her? Not so far. Have you tried getting tough with her? No, I don't think it'll work. Risk it. See what happens. No, yeah, well, I'll think about it. She's gone to the sea somewhere, you said. What? Mrs. Marshall. Oh, yeah, yeah, I think so. Why do you want to know? What? No, 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 I didn't. It doesn't matter. Excuse me, will you? Morris and the carpenter were walking close at hand. They wept like anything to see such quantities of sand. If this were only cleared away, they said, it would be grand. Alice. Through the looking glass, I always think of it on long, flat beaches. Glad we came? Yes, very. Good. 
feel buried in that place sometimes. Yes, I know. All this gets things in the right perspective. If seven maids with seven mops swept it for half a year, do you suppose... The walrus said... ...that they could get it clear? I, I doubt it, said the carpenter. And, and shed a bitter, bitter tear. I think perhaps we'd better separate them. See if that does any good. Yeah. Any other problems since I've been away? Two days, nothing. It's been pretty quiet, really. Yeah. Did you have a pleasant weekend? Yes, lovely. We walked a lot and talked a lot and ate too much. Well, I must say, you certainly look wonderful on it. How were your relations? My relations? Yes, weren't you staying with relations? Oh, yes, relations. Yes, well, they were fine, thank you. Fine. <laughs> <laughs> God. <laughs> Was I supposed to be staying with relations? Well, that's what you told me. Oh, dear, what a time we'd wear by. <laughs> Sorry, Charles. It just seemed more sensible to keep it to ourselves. Oh, I don't apologise. I quite understand. I don't think anybody else here knows. Well, I really must try and remember what I said to people. You see, you can tell I'm not used to deception, can't you? Now, have you got those release dates for me? Yes, here you are. Oh, and uh, any time you want to visit your relations again, don't hesitate to ask, will you? I'll gladly take over here. Thank you, Charles. I see you succeeded with Spooner. Yes. You're surprised, aren't you? Since you ask, yes, I am, rather. Oh, so was I. Sudden change of heart. How do you mean? Well, she was being as stubborn as usual, absolutely refusing a visit, couldn't do anything with her. And then I... Well, I tried a rather a different approach, and hey, presto. What approach? That wasn't really my idea. Charles suggested I got tough. So I did. I more or less ordered her to see her sister. Angrily? No, not exactly angry. But as though you expected to be obeyed? No. Yes, that worked before. Before? Well, when she first came, she wouldn't cooperate. She kept pretending to be ill. We couldn't do anything with her. Then she was up before Mrs. Forrester, who told her where to get off in no uncertain terms. After that, no problem. Obviously, a response to firm treatment. I suppose so, but she's a strange woman. Slippery. Slippery? Just when you think you know where you are with her, she does the unexpected. I must get on. Sit down. Ellen. Ellen. Hello, Alice. You're looking well. I'm not so bad. What have you done to your hand? I hurt it. The people here have been so kind and courteous, I had no idea. They're all right. I'm sorry I couldn't visit you before, but I've not been very well, my leg. Better know. now, are you? A little, thank you. So you're coming home. Soon now. Next week. Next week, is it? I expect you're looking forward to it. Aren't you? Yes, ma'am. <gasps> yes, Alice. Your little room is all ready for you. I dare say you'll be pleased to see it again. Yes, Alice. It hasn't been the same without you. The house, I mean. I've missed you. Don't do that, Ellen. Sorry. Well, now we must make arrangements for your journey. You'll get the train, and I'll arrange for a car to meet you at Temple Meads. How's it going, Mrs. Winter? All right so far. No actions. Everything's sweetness and light. It was a bit sticky at first, but you'd expect that. Good. Looks as if that's worked, then. I think so. Thank you, Mrs. Winter. And I feel sure you'll behave properly now. After all, we don't want any more trouble. Do we, Ellen? I'm not coming home, Alice. Can you manage? Yes, thank you. It's not heavy. Come on, then. I 
say goodbye then, Miss Parrish. Goodbye, Mrs. Spooner. Take care of yourself. Thank you for what you've done. You've been good to me. That's all right. You're off to Bristol, aren't you? Yes, Bristol. Good. I'm glad we sorted that out anyway. Of course, I may not be there long. No. Well, just so long as you keep out of trouble. Goodbye, Mrs. Spooner. Shall we sort that out in my office? Come on, Mrs. Spooner, you don't want to miss your train. That's her. I'd come and meet you. Yes. It's so quick on the motorway these days. And you'll enjoy the drive. <gasps> Why did you play the two of clubs, Colonel? You might have known I was going to trump. Well, I didn't, dear lady. I assure you, I didn't. <laughs> well, should we play another rubber? Expect you'd like some coffee or something, wouldn't oh, you? Please don't trouble. Oh, it's no trouble. Spooner's back with us. Oh, is she better now? Oh, yes. Much better, thank you. Very good of you having her back, in my opinion. Oh, no, this is her home. Well, that's as maybe. There are many who would not have been so forgiving. Cut the cards, Felicity. Cut the cards. Yes, ma'am. Oh, Spooner, bring some coffee, will you? And while you're here, will you make up the fire? It's getting rather chilly. I expect you are glad to be back, aren't you, Spooner? We don't refer to it. I think we're pretending it didn't happen. I see. <coughs> Come on, Colonel. Oh, what? Sorry, um, one half. Well, Spooner, I hope you appreciate the debt of gratitude you owe Mrs. Blewett without having you back after what happened before. Pass. Oh, that's an unexpected thing to do, my dear Miss T. Wouldn't you say it was rather an unexpected thing to do it? Oh, do be quiet, Colonel. I'm trying to think. Oh, leave the fire now, spoon and bring the coffee. Two clubs. Pass. Uh, two hearts. Pass. Mm. Pass. Oh, Miss Parrish? Yes. I just thought you might like to know. I've had a letter from Mrs. Druitt. Hi, Mrs. Druitt. Mrs. Spooner's sister. Oh, yes. How's she getting on? Splendidly. Apparently, she's settled down again, and her sister says she's certain the troubles are over. Hello, Jackson. Good. Well, I wonder what all that fuss was about. Then. Oh, God, no. But we needn't worry anymore. All is well. Apparently. Good night. What do you mean? Your letter was from her sister. You haven't actually heard from Mrs. Spooner. No, that is. Good night. Oh, Peter, Good night. excuse me, Miss Spooner. Peter? Did you have a good weekend? Yes, lovely, thank you. You were with Mrs. Marshall, weren't you? Yes, I was. Why didn't you tell me? I'll tell you what. Well, that you were going away for the weekend together. Look, Liz, I have known Sue for a very long time. It was all perfectly respectable. We stayed with some friends of mine near Chichester. Then why all the secrecy? <laughs> I don't know. Well, it seemed a good idea at the time. Well, I wish you'd told me, that's all. Look, Peter, I know we agreed to go our separate ways, but it isn't going to work unless we're straight with each other. Can't you see that? No, I really don't want to discuss it here in the centre. Now, you're right. I know you're right, but we're well, not here. Let's talk about it some other time. All right. That's what you want? Yes, that is what I want. Good night, Liz. Well, help. an idiot. Oh, they've gone now, thank God, so you can clear away. Stupid people. I don't know why I have them here. There's 
think you're the maid. You know that, don't you? My poor little maid servant who had an unfortunate lapse and stole six summer frocks from the drapers at White Lady's Road. <laughs> they all know you went to prison. Oh, yes, they all know. They don't refer to it, but they know. And they think it's very philanthropic of me to have you back. <laughs> philanthropic. Well, are you happy, little Ellen? Happy to be home with your sister again. It's cosy, isn't it? Just the two of us. And there's plenty for you to do about the house. Oh, by the way, I told the char lady she needn't come anymore. It's a waste of money now that you're here. And we don't want her asking questions, do we? People are such gossips. Once it gets out, it'll be all round the town in no time. Oh, by the way, I think you oughtn't to go out for a bit, not just for a while. I can do all the ordering on the phone, and most of the big shops d deliver anyhow, so there's really no need. And we don't want people asking questions, do we? Well, I think I'm going to bed now. You'll see to the fire, won't you? And make sure that the front door is locked and bolted. One has to be so careful these days with the increase in crime. Then I expect you know all about that, don't you? Ah, an old friend back again. Miss Parrish, do you remember Mrs. Spooner? Oh, no. I'm afraid so. Arson and attempted murder. Yes, I read about it in the papers. I believe the sister's all right, but there was considerable damage to the house. Oh, dear. I thought something like this might happen. Why do you say that? I expect you remember, Governor. She didn't want to go out when her sentence was completed. Well, I thought Miss Clark had got to the bottom of all well, that. But it would seem not. But she did go to see the sister, didn't she? Oh, yes. And I don't know why she didn't want to go back. According to Miss Clark, she's an intelligent, caring sort of person. But the fact is that Mrs. Spooner wanted to stay here. And we all know that she works away at a thing until she gets what she wants. She's a very determined lady. Well, whether it's what she wanted or not, it's what she got. Now, I suggest we put her in South Wing. At least you'll know one or two of the inmates there. Might help, help her to settle down a bit. Yes, Governor. You know, there was something she said to me when, when we were saying goodbye. I happened to make some remark about her going to Bristol, and she looked at me for a moment, and then she said, ah, yes, Bristol, but of course I may not be there for long. You mean she had all this planned even then? Who knows? <laughs> <laughs>